Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at some of the main concepts and fundamentals of PySpark. We will understand what distributed computing is, what Apache Spark is, and what PySpark is. If you are a beginner, it will help you understand the basics of PySpark and get started. And if you are already working in PySpark, uh, it will be quick revision for you that which are those 5 to 10 percent of the main concepts and programmatically important syntaxes with which you can get 80 to 90 percent of the task done. And also if you are preparing for an interview, what are those main uh, concepts and fundamentals and programming syntax to know with which you can so, uh, solve majority of the task in your interview as well. So with that, let's get started. First of all, we will understand what distributed computing is. Distributed computing involves splitting a large problem into a smaller task and processing them across multiple nodes and then aggregating the results. So basically splitting a large problem into a smaller task and each of these smaller tasks are getting processed in um, uh, different multiple nodes and finally the results are aggregated to get the final output. Apache Spark is one such open source distributed computing system designed for faster processing of large data set using cluster of computers or machines. And uh, what is PySpark? PySpark is the Python API for Apache Spark enabling effective big data processing and analysis for uh, analysis with Python. So we saw the distributed computing is dividing a large task into smaller task and processing them into multiple nodes. And Apache Spark is a distributed computing framework and PySpark is a Python API for Py for Apache Spark. Now let's understand with an example where this kind of distributed computing can be helpful. So let's say the task is to perform a word count on large document, very big document. What you can do is that uh, to process the word count of this large document, you will need a very big machine and sometimes even in very big machine, it won't fit. So what you can do is you can divide your document into multiple chunks. So um, this document will be divided into multiple chunks and let's say you have four nodes, four machines. You can just distribute each chunk to these machines. Now these machines will individually calculate the word count of that chunk. Now understand what's happening. The chunk may be very large in itself and there may be uh, many sentences and documents within it. Now when the word count is processed that the node which is processing the uh, particular chunk it will do a uh, word to its number of count it has appeared. So it will process that big document into key value pairs where key are the words and values are how many times it's appeared. So it's already a condensed representation of that larger chunk. And same thing will be done by all the nodes for their respective chunks. And finally, all the results will can be combined since these aggregated chunks uh, results, which are the process results of each node is already small. You can then distribute just the results and do the final aggregation. And final aggregation will have again key values. Key is the word and value how many times it has appeared across uh, all the document because now you are aggregating the individual counts of all the chunks. So by dividing a large document into smaller chunks, distributing those chunks ac across multiple nodes and then aggregating the results, we can efficiently count word frequencies in a distributed manner. This approach allows to process large data set that would be infeasible to handle in a single machine. So this is the main concepts of distributed computing on which even map reduce are based and using the same logic, ma ma very advanced and sophisticated tasks can be solved. So now next we will uh, go to the PySpark that which are the most important concepts and most important uh, syntax with which you can solve 80 to 90 percent of all the tasks. So first of all, what is data frame? Data frame is a distributed collection of data organized in named columns similar to tables in relational database. I will show an example. Suppose there, are, there is an advertiser uh, who runs a campaign. So advertiser runs a campaign on particular product. He spends some money on that advertisement campaign in order, in the hope to maximize his sales. So the detail is of that only for each advertiser, which product they promoted, how much money they spent in the advertisement, what was the sales they received and on which date they ran the campaign. So to create this data frame, uh, what we can do, we can create, uh, we, we can use this syntax, we can use the struct field, which helps to define the data type of each column and uh, uh, that's the data frame you have and we have one more data frame which also has the advertiser date of joining. It's, it's a single row for each advertiser that which date they joined. So we have these two type of uh, tables and these are called data frames in PySpark because they can be 
distributed large collection of data organized into named columns which have a data type as well. Next, what we will do is, uh, we will understand what transformations and actions are. So, there is important concepts of transformations and actions in PySpark. Transformation means that these are the operations that are applied to data frame to produce a new data frame. For example, select, filter, group by, join. These are some of the transformation and when a transformation is called, uh, PySpark doesn't execute it directly, it just creates a execution graph which is not executed yet. It creates a execution graphs and whenever an action is called, what is action? Action are the operation that trigger the execution of transformations and return results. So, whenever a transformer method like select, filter, group by, join is called, it will just create the execution graph and when an action like collect, count, show, these kind of methods are called, it will implement or it will execute that execution graph that it had created before. Uh, so that it can do all sorts of optimization while execution. It doesn't have to do all the steps. If some optimization is possible in that graph, it will optimize and then uh, perform the execution. So transformations are uh, these kind of methods which are which creates an execution graph or action graph that will be executed only once an action is called. Uh, next important syntax to know is group by and aggregations. Group by usually groups data based on one or more columns and aggregations. Uh, once the data has been grouped, it can do operations like count, sum, average, max, min and so on. Now, the best way to learn anything is take a problem statement and uh, see that how to solve it using these uh, concepts. So, let's say in the above data frame that we saw where we have advertiser campaign details and advertiser joining date. Let's say the task is for each advertiser find their total advertisement spends, resulting sales and hence effective ROI. Now, advertiser ha must have run many campaigns. Now, what we want is an aggregated sum of the advertiser spends, aggregated sales and hence the effective ROI. So, what we can do here is we can use the group by, we can group by advertiser because for each advertiser we want their aggregates. So, we can group by advertiser and then do the aggregate uh, method. Uh, we, for each product, we can find how many distinct products are there, which we, which we can name as product promoted. You, you can use this syntax alias to rename the column. So, count distinct products, which will be products promoted. Sum of the total advertisement is spent. Sum of the total sales. And we know ROI is total sales by total advertisement is spent. So, total sum of sales by total divided by total sum of advertisement is spent. And we can round it to two digits and name it as ROI. So, this is the uh, case in which you will need group by and aggregate methods to perform uh, the task. Another important concept in PySpark is window functions. These functions operate on a set of rows. Now, which set of rows? There can be multiple rows in a data frame, but you can define which set of rows only this window window is defined. And uh, there can be multiple windows on different uh, rows. So, let's understand it. These functions are operate on on a set of rows and return a single value for each row. For example, rank, dense rank, row number, lead and lag. Let's understand with an example again. Now, the problem statement is for each advertiser find their latest spent on ads. So, the advertiser has run many campaigns and there are many advertisers. We want to find which was their latest campaign. Now, if we have to just find latest campaign across the data, we can use min. But here we are saying for each advertiser find their latest campaign. So, what we can do, we can create a window, we can uh, specify a window, we can uh, first import window from uh, pyspark.sql.window and then we can define the window, where the window is applicable, I said for each advertiser find their latest campaign, so window will be of the advertiser, so all the rows of that advertiser will come within this window, window.partition by advertiser and do we want to order the rows in some uh, way, yes, we want to order it by the descending order of campaign date, that is the latest campaign should be row number one, second latest should be second and so on. So, uh, we have created the window for each advertiser and we have sorted uh, the rows within it depending on the campaign date. Now, we also want to give a row number to it and once we have defined a window, we can give a row number uh, over the window. So, basically what will happen, one new column will be added uh, which will give the row number to this sorted rows. Now, to find the latest ad spend of any advertiser, what we want to do, what we can do, we can simply filter the row number equal to 1 and drop that column and we will get the latest advertisement spend for each advertiser. So, what happened here? We created the window for advertiser, we sorted the rows basis of campaign date and also gave a row number to it. Now, for each advertiser, we just want the first row. So, just filter 
out row number equal to 1 and that is our answer. Next important concept in PySpark is joins. So PySpark supports various type of joins like outer, left, right, semi, anti, inner and this is used to combine two data frames. Suppose there are two data frames, you want to join them on a particular key. Inner means you just want the common rows, left means you want all the rows of uh, left table and only the matching rows of the right table and similarly right uh, join means you want all the rows of right table and only the matching matching rows from the left table. Again let's understand with the problem statement. In the same advertisement spend data, suppose we want the advertiser join date as well. So basically the two data frames which we are separate now, one was of the campaign, another was of the join date, we want to combine them, we want to join them. So what we can do, we can join DF with DF advertiser, DF advertiser contains the join date. Uh, on which column do we want to join? We want to join on advertiser column because that is the key on which we will do the join and how inner join and we will uh, order by on the date of join. So you can see that C all the C has been come first B second and A third because C has joined uh, latest and before that B joined and uh, A was the old, oldest to join. So in this way you can create joins. Next important concept in PySpark is UDFs which is user defined functions. UDFs means these are the custom functions that are created to extend the capabilities of PySpark beyond its internal functions. So there are internal built-in built functions but sometimes there may be need of um, user defined functions which and we can use simple python like syntax to create these uh, functions but the catch here is these functions will again be executed in a distributed manner. So these are called user defined functions. So let's understand with problem statement. Uh, in the last data frame where we calculated the ROI, we had the ROI numbers, right? Now let's say, uh, let's say for each advertiser, we also want to categorize the advertiser ROI into different buckets that is low, medium and high. Now the solution is here we can create a custom UDF to categorize the ROI into different buckets. So we can say, let's say we can define this kind of Pythonic function that categorize ROI, if ROI is less than 10, return low, if it is between 10 to 15, medium and if it's more than 15, then high. Now the extra thing apart from the Pythonic function we have to do is we have to register the UDF. To register the UDF, we can call the UDF method and we have already imported it. We will tell it which function to take, the categorize ROI function to take and what is the return type, string type because for data frame, all the columns are named and as well as data type is defined. So we are telling it that the data type is uh, string type. Now we can just create a column with column ROI category, call this function on which column? On the ROI column, so column ROI and as a result of that we will have the ROI categorized whenever it's less than 10 low, uh, 10 to 15 medium and greater than 15 high. So this is how you can use uh, UDF user defined functions. Next important concept is SQL and data frame APIs. So let's start with data frame APIs. We have already used data frame APIs above in the code. But let's get it introduced more formally. Data frame API provides methods to manipulate and analyze data using object oriented programming. Uh, so data frame API provides various methods like filter, group by, with column that we have already seen. So let's uh, see again. Suppose you want to uh, the, the above data frame that we created ROI categorize. Let's filter only the advertisers which have greater than 1000 rupees spent. So if you see only the B has greater than 1000 rupees spent once we filter out we will only get B. So filter is a kind of data frame API. These are the methods which allows to analyze data using object oriented programming way. And this notebook I will attach in the description section. You can download it from there. Similarly, there is SQL API as well. So we know that SQL is very popular and many people are comfortable with SQL. So there is a SQL API as well. You can use SQL like syntax with data frames. To do that, you can first, you have to first create or replace temp view. Uh, of each data frame. So each advert, each data frame you can just give it a name to be manipulated using SQL API. So you can create a temp view called advertisements. Now you can use SQL like syntax. If you remember we created, uh, we calculated the ROI for each advertiser using group by. Here we can do same thing using SQL. So select advertisers, sum of their total advertisement spend, their total sales as total sales. We can also calculate sum of sales by sum of advertisement spend which is the ROI from advertisement. Advertisement means the one that we have registered as a temp view and then uh, we have to group by advertiser and same results we get as we got with the group by data frame API with the here we use the SQL API. Few more important concepts persisting and caching. 
Persisting means using persist to store the data frame into memory or disk for faster repeated access. Suppose a data frame we are uh, using it again and again in our code, we can persist it. That is we can ask it to be kept in memory or disk only uh, for faster access. Similarly caching means keep it on memory only, only the cache. While persisting means you can keep it in memory and if there is not enough space keep it on disk. So uh, let's see how it's done. Suppose DF the data frame, the advertisement campaign data frame, we are using it again in again in our code. So we can do say DF dot persist storage level dot memory and disk store it in memory and disk, and we can import the storage level from PySpark, and then we can perform all of our operations. And once we are done, we feel that we are not be using it very frequently now. We can unpersist it so that that memory can be freed for other data frames to be persisted. Similarly, if we want it to be only in the cache, we can do df.cache and later once uh, the use is done, we can unpersist it. One last concept that I want to cover is optimization techniques. Here we will cover broadcast joins and partitioning. So first of all, broadcast joins. Broadcast joins means optimizing a join operation by broadcasting a smaller data frame. So sometimes what can happen, one of the data frame in the join is very small. So what we can do, we can make that data frame available to all the nodes in my distributed computing cluster so that there is minimal data movement the join uh, whatever data is present in that node can just join with the broadcasted data that we have made available in that node and so so on we have made that broadcasted data available in all the nodes so what will happen because of that the number of data movements the amount of data movements will drastically reduce so if you remember the task where we brought cam advertiser campaign uh, advertiser joining date of the platform and joined it with the campaign table here we can broadcast the uh, ad df advertiser data frame which is the advertiser joining date because each advertiser has just one joining date so that data frame is very small it will have only one row one row per advertiser which is their joining date we can broadcast the smaller data frame and then join it and this is very effective join that's why i have called the final if, uh, resultant data frame as df effective join the other concept is of partitioning, ensuring data is partitioned correctly, which can improve the performance and also the speed. Suppose the task is write data in a partition manner so that it's easy to read the partitions and also the new data also appended to that partition. So let me explain. Uh, we have the campaign data frame and let's say this is a very huge data. There, uh, there are thousands or lakhs of advertisers who advertise every day. So every day you get lot of campaigns. To get campaigns of a particular period efficiently, what you need to do, you need to partition this data frame by campaign date and then save it. And let's say some new data comes or some uh, data which was not available previously, now it has now available. You can just append it to those partitions. So we take the data frame which was the, which was the campaign data frame DF. We write it to some location, but before writing, we partition it by date. So what will happen because of that in the location where you are writing it, it will be stored in this way. So dif different folders will be created for each campaign date and data of that campaign date will be in that uh, folder only. Now, now let's say new data has come that is for 3rd January. Let's say some pending data was there, which was not available before. Now it's available and also for new date. 7th January also the data is available. If you see previously the data was only available uh, till 6th of January. Now new data for 7th January has come and some pending data for 3th January has also come. So what will happen? Uh, we will uh, have a data frame for that as well and while writing it again we will partition by campaign date and we will write in append mode. Initially when we created data frame we created overwrite. So it will overwrite and create new folders. Now we are just appending. So what will append to the existing uh, dates which are already available, the folders for those dates already available, it will append there and for new dates which is not available, it will create new uh, folders. Now if we read from the same location after writing the appended data, you can see that um, all the rows are available for three, there are two rows available, the one that came later, the one that came later, this one A. Uh, and also the new one the for 7 January the new row is also available and you can you will see in the output location this is how the folder structure will be. So uh, that's it in this video where we got introduced to PySpark we understood what distributed computing is what Apache Spark is PySpark which is a Pythonic API over Apache Spark we also understood which are the main concepts that one needs to know in 
pie spark with which they can do their day to day tasks done at their work if there is an interview these uh, if you know just these concepts you will be able to generalize it to any problem statement and also for beginners they got a good understanding of pie spark hope you like the video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates see you in the next one bye